and then there's, a, there's another slide that shows where the group dynamic actually kind of came closer together. Is that the next one or do you have another one in between? Well, I have another one in between which shows us the uh, chakra energy. We can also analyze the same information from the fingertips related to the different mm -hmm. chakras in the body. So we can then see uh, which of the chakras are out of balance. If we say a person is in balance or out of balance, we could actually relate it to a certain organ in a certain software or we use the chakra, virtual chakra software to analyze the energetic state and the imbalance state of chakras. What we discovered when we were measuring the chakras, that was only during the last day and just before the presentation, I realized, let's look at the chakra images for the whole group, for the entire study that we did. And what we could see was the chakra of the heart was the strongest of all chakras was very interesting. Mm -hmm. And also the deviation of the chakra, meaning a an, an physical or a um, mental emotional imbalance that we can measure in numerical values was smallest for the heart chakra, but larger for the other chakras. So w what we can say then as a conclusion out of this chakra analysis is that the chakra, the heart chakra had the strongest mm -hmm. energy during the training and the strongest balance during the training. That was quite an interesting observation. I didn't expect that at all. <laughs> and our claim is that this is the energy of love. And we focus with the heart center. And I know whenever I teach, it's from the heart. Understanding the heart also has mind. And whenever I want to be this kind of teacher that wants people to think a little bit beyond what they understand, I always like to say, learn how to think with your heart and feel with your mind. It's always fun to say, and you sit there, okay, what does that mean? But the heart is a very strong energy center, and I've come to rely on it all these years. It never fails. It's going right to that energy. The other thing is that in measuring the chakra system, my claim for this system in the energy anatomy, 20 years I've been working with it, using it, improving it, thousands of people all over the world are also saying, let's try this. Whether you accept it as a consciousness construct or a concept or a reality, it does radiate from the chakras. So measuring the chakras themselves would also help to measure, even though we can't see this lattice, and I have all these particulars and details to it, we can see the results of what happens when we are working with it. So now I understand this next slide shows some interesting results from group dynamics. Yeah, exactly. What we did was that we measured those five people during the whole training. And in the software we can see one session at a time. We can also analyze a few sessions on the screen in parallel. But putting all this data, the numerical data that we get out into a tool like Excel, we can then see tendencies. So I put this up on the screen here. We see the group dynamic uh, over the training, uh, duration of the training, for a parameter that we call entropy. Now entropy could also be um, treated as a level of chaos in the human body and in the energy field that we measure. So we measure for some of the students, or in some cases even for all of the students that we measured in this uh, group, we see that the energy level, the entropy level of the energy becomes similar or even the same. And the same goes for another parameter that we measured, the chakra balance. Now, not for all chakras, but for many chakras, we see that the students come into a same state of balance during some of the sessions. One of the sessions is a session that Peggy led for the whole uh, study group, uh, phase nine repetition, where we see a clear uh, group dynamic where the students that we measured were on the same level of balance right after these sessions. So it was a, a very interesting observation. So it not only shows certain parts of the day where there was some EMF balancing that went on that seemed to bring people together, but it also shows toward mm -hmm. the end the effect of the overall class unifying people's energy into the same frequencies or the same balance. Absolutely. And what is interesting was that we could see the same tendency in the Germany group as well. Very interesting. And, and that ties into what it's been like for me all these years. Um, different cultures, but there's a journey we take together. I look clear to the core, which goes beyond culture, goes beyond language, goes beyond the color of our skin, and right to that place of wholeness. And there's a journey we take. And during that journey, there are times that people will go through a little bit of this um, 
we would call entropy, and then they come back again. And, and there's nothing, the other thing that I found very interesting about this is that it's not forced. The work is done, and it's according to the individual's wisdom. So what that means is that by the end, according to their wisdom, I always like to say to my classes, thank you for saying yes. And, and in the end, they all belong to themselves. I'm the teacher, but they belong to themselves. And to see them all decide to come together, expressing their energy of wholeness, and seeing that measured, that was very exciting to me. I didn't even know we could measure that. <laughs> So I'll ask both of you, let you take turns. What, what is your conclusion from the studies that you've already seen, from the synergy that you've discovered that is almost like you know, another one of those divine uh, situations where people come together? Mm -hmm. um, what's your conclusion now of, of everything that you've learned together? Well, my conclusion is that we are really able to measure what EMF does. Uh, we can see tendencies for the clients, for the practitioners, what is happening during the sessions. What would be interesting to go on and study is to have a direct client practitioner set up. Because now we have been in a training situation, we have studied two training courses with Peggy. It would be interesting to see what is happening in a direct client practitioner setup. Uh, because we would be able to see if the um, practitioner has a certain level of experience, if the practitioner is in balance while giving the session and how that influences the balance of the client. It would be very interesting to see these effects. And for me, at some point I realized that the, the EMF balancing technique has 12 phases to it and each phase has been taught in groups of four. We have phases one through four, that is the um, evolutionary foundations, phases five through eight, masters in practice, and then phases nine through 12 is the emerging evolutionary. And this was just the first time I was teaching this. So something else he was also measuring was um, the resonance of a new level of energy. And there were some other findings that we are not ready to show yet that were really profound that aren't often seen, but in cases of, of healers that Lutz had said certain things. And we don't call ourselves healers. We work with a balancing energy. For me, it's been very encouraging. And um, I'm still processing everything I've seen with this. It explains to me what I have felt all these years as I start to work with people. It explains, um, to me, it also is the power of not trying to force one's energy on someone else. It's always been, I walk in, I honor the core of the being, and then what we agree to do is the process. And it's through the process we meet, and that process nurtures the strengthening of the energy of wholeness within an individual. It's, it's very simple, but it's very profound and this encourages me to continue on. I truly, truly believe in the energy of love. Then we're taking this work further, and we're going, the, um, the work itself provides a place where the possibilities are infinite, and we bring in a logic to it. And quite often when people talk about expanded realities or they talk about greater possibilities, and they'll talk about the logic of a situation and then something that goes beyond that logic. An example of this is like when someone is in a car accident and they're able to move a big car because their, their child may be in danger. This, is a, this appears to be a miraculous type of event. What we're doing with this work is we bring in logic, which is understanding, following a certain process, understanding a certain way that we choose to hold our energy, much like a... Um, a posture of, of a martial artist holds their energy to direct it. And then the session itself creates that space where anything is possible. So you bring these two together and we can have evolution and we can have expansion of consciousness while we're smiling. We don't always have to have those extreme situations. Those extreme situations out of the ordinary demonstrate to us what is possible. But for myself, picking up a pot of fire and having burns heal in three minutes in front of three other people because there was this energy and this possibility came up. We all know spontaneous healing is possible. And, and we are doing it, but is it consistent? Not yet.